What's up, guys? It's the Heat Defender Show, show, episode three, United Football Media. Alex, he's back. Hopefully, I don't cut you off this week. What's going on? Happy to be here, buddy. And you won't cut me off this week because you know what? Hit the music. Super draft, super draft. I know we've been looking over this roster for the last uh, week now, roughly. Um, Super draft, one big free agent signing for our defenders. Uh, Davin Bellamy, hinting at maybe there's one more out there after this. So, like, I'm I'm waiting for the news. Um, He's a great foul. He is our equivalent of Mark Thompson. He's not as crazy and all that, but he's a good foul. He's entertaining, and he's engaging. But... I'm Webb. He's Alex. How are you, Alex? I'm doing great, man. I'm excited. Excited that Super Draft is behind us. Um, and one week closer to kicking off. One week co- closer to football. And that's exciting for me. Um, I want to tip my cap to you. I'm, I know you're going to take your victory lap here in a little bit. But uh, <laughs> no. you did a great job prepping for our <laughs> Super Draft preview. And uh you're pretty close, pretty spot on. There were actually a couple of folks that ended up getting drafted that um, I, I think you might have a hotline to Coach Barlow and and and, uh, and Vaughn. <laughs> yeah, well, if they do watch, I, I enjoy their views on uh, YouTube. But let's dig right in. We'll we'll go over every single guy. We got a few things planned for the end. But round one, Jalen McClendon, the quarterback from the Vegas Vipers, played at Baylor, played at NC State, um, had a cup cup of coffee in. Buffalo camp this this year, uh, mobile, pocket passer. He he wants to show off his arm. Every interview that you read about him, uh, he talks about his arm strength and how much he wants to be a passer. But he's super athletic. Your your thoughts, Alex? Well, he was my number one pick, if you recall, right when we were talking about <laughs> the quarterbacks we wanted to <laughs> take. You had put the the three up, and and um, I knew we'd get Jalen number one. That's great, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic athlete. We talked about it. Fits in uh, Coach Kaisa's system very well. Yeah. Um, run. You know, it's going to be interesting because if you think about it, uh, you look at our quarterback room. We have two quarterbacks with uh, DeAndre, uh, Francois, and then uh, McClendon. So you got to figure there's another quarterback still in play there um, as well. Um, you're going to have to. you got to get that third quarterback. But um, McClendon, athletic. He showed flashes last year with uh, Vegas to be a very good um, professional quarterback. But if you look at it, you know, the actual snaps, the actual number of passes, the, you know, he hasn't had a, there's not a lot on him yet. So it's kind of a still yet an open book, but all the tools are there and I'm glad we picked him up. Yeah. You said there's not a lot of ton of stats out there on him. And he went to school in 2015, 16. Like, for him to keep kicking around and people are giving him shot after shot after shot, there's obviously something there. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's not like he's six foot six. It's not like he runs like Lamar Jackson. It's not like he has an arm like Josh Allen. You know what I mean? Like, he, he's got to have something for yeah. the XFL, UFL, USFL training camp to keep giving him shots, even though he doesn't yeah. really have a lot of tape. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm excited about it. If Tiamu comes back, great. Um, yeah. Obviously, he fits the system, but I, I really think McGlennon could fill that spot of the offensive player of the year last year. You got to remember the quarterback of this offense, if they run it correctly, offensive player of the year. Yep. And and he was your pick. I remember when you were when you were going through the quarterbacks, you felt very confident even before we did the show that McClendon would yep. fit very well in the system and you were high on him. So um, nice call. Round two, three, Chris Rowland from the Philadelphia Stars on the USFL side and TJ Barnes from the, the champ, as you can see, he's holding the trophy, the Arlington Renegades. All right. We both said defensive line and we both said wide receiver. Yep. Which one, be going into it, which one did you think was more of a priority, a wide receiver or a defensive tackle? I'm just going to say wide receiver because the wide receiver – core was so good last year and we lost you know with Blair and Jackson they're big holes to fill um so so I really wanted to see them pick up a wide receiver too and I was happy they got rolling um you know last year was an unfortunate year for him um you know being injured and 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 I think got injured game one uh with the yeah. stars so, I mean he kind of the whole season was kind of a wash but 
Um, very talented receiver. Uh, definitely will fit into that room really well. So I was happy with that pick for sure. Yeah, Roland, he does special. He does, well, you know me. I'm a defensive guy. I'm going to take defensive tackle. But we did need wide receiver. Roland does special teams. I remember one hit he had one on season one when he was healthy the entire year. He was one of those favorite targets of Brian Scott and Case Cookus um, for the Stars in that season one. Season two, it seemed like he was going to be great um, before he got injured. TJ Barnes, big defensive tackle. I love be- defensive tackles. We'll talk about another one in a little bit. This is championship mentality, right? This yeah. guy won the championship this year. He knows what it takes to go through this. Bringing over a winner into this situation, into a team that, you know, they beat in the championship. I, I think it's a perfect fit. TJ, it seems like he's towards the end of his career. He's past the middle midway point of his career. And um, I I think he's a perfect fit for this team. I, I really do. He's a big personality. I, I love personalities and I love big DT. So I, it's a win-win for me. Welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, championship last year. Uh, yeah, and, and you're right. He's at a point in his career, too, where, you know, he can leave his mark on uh, – on DC football, on spring football, um, you know, definitely big in the middle. Uh, you know, when you look at, you know, not, not to get too far off script, but, you know, Donovan Jeter, they're bringing back Joe yep. Wallace, who I called out earlier yep. on our very yep. first show. He's one of my favorite uh, defenders out there, Big Joe. Um, and then, of course, we'll talk a little bit about who else they picked up. But, um, you know, TJ's a nice addition in the middle there. And uh, can't beat those Georgia Tech guys. They're pretty tough. <laughs> Round four through six. I went with the smaller pictures here because I, I think this is our victory lap. Honestly, out of all of them, yes, we use specific names, but we talked about the offensive line and we talked about, you know, even though they drafted the offensive line and we had a bunch of offensive line, you can never have enough offensive line. And then you talked about having a guy that could kind of do a little bit of everything. Puka Williams, your call out. I, I just think Chidi Okiki, high, high ceiling, very high ceiling. Adonis Boone is a younger guy that probably has a very high ceiling, went to Louisville. He's a big guy. Every picture that I see, I look at him and I'm like, man, that's a big guy, especially a Louisville guy. Like, usually the big guys are like Alabama and Georgia and everything. But, like, when you look at Adonis Boone in any of the photos, like, searching for him, he just looks big. Um, And then Puka Williams is awesome. So. Yeah, the two linemen they picked up there are big. And if you go and you read their draft profiles, they are, the you know, they're – works in progress in a good way. The frame is there. The athletic ability is there. The potential to be, you know, uh, on an NFL roster is there. So I think they're great pickups for us. We brought back a lot of starts on that offensive line, but you know, and I know you can't have too many of those big guys up front. Mm -hmm. You know, we're bringing back some guys with a lot of starts and gelling, but you know, these, these guys um, along with George Moore, don't forget we picked him up in the, uh, in the, in the dispersal draft. Um, we got better up front. We certainly did. And then Puka, you know, he's a guy, especially with KJ sales, not coming back or possibly not coming back. Puka can really help us in the return game. And he's a a very explosive, you know, he's, he's not going to be that guy between the tackles. That's going to be, you know, running over linebackers for and falling forward for extra yards. He's not going to be that guy in blitz pickup. That's going to put somebody on their butt back there protecting, but he is a wonderful athlete. He's fast dynamic and they you know he's a weapon that you can put in certain situations where you can exploit a defense and where he can be successful i'm glad that we were able to get him in the super draft and bring him back to dc yeah yeah. i'm i'm shocked when he was left off i thought maybe he was done playing maybe he was moving on i was shocked when they left him off and the fact that they were able to get him back in round six it shocks yep. me even more because everyone else passed on him for like they legit got four, 13 rounds to take a chance yeah. for Puka and then they didn't get him. But the jack of all trades is back. And like you said, we need help in a return game probably. And Puka is yeah. one of those guys. Darren Sproles. Every time I watch him, it's kind of Darren Sproles ish. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. Good. Seven compare. or eight. Th- these, these might be two of my favorites. Uh, Nadea Rouse. Uh, coming back for season two and CJ Johnson, the collegiate draft pick out of ECU. I know you love those small school uh, mid-major guys. CJ Johnson, talk, go ahead. Let's say good size, six, two, I think two ten. Um, you know, p- played with, um, uh, Ehlers at, at East Carolina, who I guess is with the renegades and kind of yep. shaking up that locker room, talking about, 
<laughs> how he's going to win the job. So uh, yeah. like the confidence, but no, I saw I CJ, I think he actually set may have set the um, American athletic conference or East Carolina single game receiving record against uh, Cincinnati Bearcats. So, uh, <laughs> you know, he's a dynamic player, good receiver. And again, when you look at, you know, sort of where we need to fill in, we got Chris Rowland, we got CJ Johnson, CJ Johnson, as you know, was a draft, from the, the college draft. Yeah. And we were able to get him back. Um, yep. So it's good that, you know, we were able to plug in there, but I'm feeling a lot better about that receiver room. And then, uh, you know, I, I like Rouse a lot and he's a Westchester division two guy yep. um, right down the street here. And, um, you know, it's nice to have him back as well. And uh, you know, that defensive backfield, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but I was looking at it. We're start returning all four starters in the depth that we're bringing back too. Um, we have a, our secondary is going to be pretty doggone good. The, the additions from Vegas, Resign and Nadir. I feel really good about that room right now. Yeah, and a, a week ago you were like, uh, I don't know. We probably yeah. need another one. And now yeah. signing sign Rouse and really looking at it, like the, this defense is loaded. Yeah. This, as long as the defense coordinator makes the right call and makes uh, consistent uh, coaches calls plays that are designed mm -hmm. for his players' abilities, not just a scheme. Mm -hmm. I, I think this defense could be amazing, honestly, and best in the league because they've got enough pass rush. What happened in Arlington over that last game against Arlington, they were what the young kids say, dog walk down the field. Yeah. What they give up, 26 first downs? Yeah. Um, now they they've got a the pass field. rush. Now they couldn't get off the field. Now they got a pass rush. Now they have yeah. secondary help. Now there's DTs that you can rotate and you don't have to play the same two for the entire four quarters. Sure. Like, there, there's a lot of talent on this team, and I, I think people are sleeping on it. I know they're ranked number three in our power rankings, and me and you both have votes, and I think yeah. we both put them at two. At but two. it, I still think people are sleeping on it just because they don't trust Jalen McClendon. But I'm telling you, he actually might fit the system better than Tiamu because he very well he, I, I just and if they bring back Tiamu, I'm going to root for JT all the way, obviously. Right. He's he's the guy, but the fact that they have number two guy that can do the same things that Tiama does, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. That's still yeah, on from the gamblers. And Go you ahead. mentioned something interesting too about uh, um, Francois is um, the D. Eric King yeah. angle with him. You know, let's say yep. that you know they end up and they end up with McClendon. He's the starter. You know, and you have Francois. You still have that package where you can bring. You know, they rotated the quarterback some last year. I tell you what. And after the first two games of the year last year, there were a lot of people, and I'll yeah. say partly me included, that wanted to see De'Eric get a start because those first two games, when he came in, the offense changed. Now, once JT kind of settled in a little bit and we got it going, he obviously was the quarterback. He was so dynamic and did so many wonderful things. But it was nice to be able to have that second quarterback that, quite frankly, to me, he was the MVP in the first two wins. Yeah. Well, and you know what's crazy is I think McClendon is better than De'Eric King. And the fact that McClendon and maybe Francois, you might have three quarterbacks that could take snaps and be effective with this offense, which yeah. is crazy because last yeah. year they only had two. Um, but they have they have quite possibly the deepest QB room if Tiamo comes back in the no league, question. which is it's just another example of Hutchinson, Barla, just you know, outmaneuvering everyone. He's playing chess. Oh, nine. Uh, as former Marler guys, he had to get his own graphic. Boogie Roberts. Um, I don't know if you saw the live coverage from United Football Media, but like when that happened, they were all smiling because they know that we're big Boogie fans. Um, more than any other team, I'm not saying that Ace covering the Roughnecks was not a Boogie fan, but we were Boogie's guys. And um, I'm, I'm super excited to see this, uh, to be the defensive tackle. This room, uh, I just said this room is, I, and we're not even to the next part. There's another addition to that room, and it just, it's just great. And I'm a defensive guy, so, and he's the mayor going to the nation's capital. So that's, that, that's a movie or something. DC fans are going to love Boogie. Yeah. He's just, he's a wonderful human being. He, um, he's just an all around good guy. And like I said, um, and I think I said it on the Mauler's farewell, well, farewell show. I was struck by like, you know, after the game and he, you know, the regular season finale against uh, or beat down against the generals when they whipped them to move into the playoffs and, you know, Boogie's hurt and he's hopping around a knee. He's, 
you know, they have to get the get him off the field. He's out there talking to the fans and the kids and stuff. He's just that guy. Um, but beyond that, he's a hell of a football player and he's very disruptive and he's quick inside and violent inside and he makes things happen and can pressure the quarterback. He is going to be a wonderful addition to this defense. Uh, it, when I, I mean, I could hardly concentrate when I saw Boogie was coming to to join us. My work day, my productivity started to go down downhill. <laughs> but uh, man, am I glad that he's with us and. DC, you, you, we got ourselves a gym here, fellas. And I love the Maulers. I will always love the Maulers. But Boogie, uh, the outside rush on the Maulers was effective. But this is another grade above with Bellamy, Ward, Harris. Like this, and I, I love the Maulers. That defense was the best spring football defense I've ever seen. Perfectly called by Horton. And his staff, I, I will never criticize it. But I'm saying pure talent. If that if that defense had a Devin Bellamy on, on the outside, they would have been even a step above that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I just I just think that's gonna help a guy like Boogie a lot because he does have they have to pay attention to the edge, which he can take uh more risks. He's not getting triple teamed all the time. So um, that's a great point. Or Alive. Alive was another one. That he's gonna he's gonna benefit from going to Houston because they do have an edge rusher. So, um, I, I think this is a great move for Boogie, and I, I think he's gonna succeed even more. So, I think so too. Round 10, 11, and twelve finish up the draft. Anthony Hines, the linebacker, coming back. Tobias Taylor, wide receiver, running back. I thought that was interesting that he, they didn't choose one or the other. And then the kicker, Enrique Yeni Romero. I did not put Romero because sometimes you see Enrique Yeni out there and sometimes you see Enrique and I I don't that's the name that they went with. So that's that's one I'm gonna go with. Um out of these three, the highest ceiling goes to Ooh. Oh well Hans of course was a stud at AM and he comes with a good pedigree and um is a heck of a football player. I think one of the biggest unknowns might be um uh Tobias Taylor. Um, signed with Virginia Tech, went to Virginia Union, finished at Notre Dame College. Um, I read his draft profile. Uh, they're high on him. You know, big yeah. physical runner, good between the tackles, good at picking up uh, uh, in pass pro. Um, a lot of positives for this guy. So I'm going to say, based on the fact that I know – not a lot about him. I'm going to say highest ceiling because I actually, I was like, Oh, who's this fellow? And I went and I started reading up and it's like, Hmm, got some tools here. They may have found a, may have found one here. So uh, I'll go with Taylor. I I can't agree more. I, I thought you were going to go with the kicker because I know your affinity for kickers, especially the ones from the last show we did together. So I thought you were going to go Yeti, but um, I agree with Taylor. It's Taylor. He had a thousand yards in five games in 2021 in the spring. Yeah at Notre Dame College, like, anything you read about this kid is, like, super fast, fastest guy in the field, powerful, expo- like, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, he's Bo Jackson from Tecmo Bowl back in the day. Like, they just describe him like he's unstoppable. Um, I, I'm definitely excited about that because it does bring another weapon. We talked about it with Puka, and if this guy's a wide receiver and a running back, yeah. <laughs> Who know who knows what he could do in uh Kaisa's offense. And and don't because, forget about Cameron Harris because you know yeah. if, you, if you look at Abram Smith, Cameron Harris, we'll see what happens with Mr. Taylor here with Puka. I mean, suddenly the running back room starts to fill yeah. up with uh significant talented athletes. Yeah. Which would take off the load of Abram Smith, which could help him later on in the season mm-hmm. um, be yeah. n- not have to carry the ball so much, even though we want him to, because then yep. he gets taken and go to the NFL. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, Anthony Hines, another solid linebacker. Um, man, a, a linebacker that can hit and cover, I'm all, I'm all for it. So uh, Anthony Hines is a good pickup, especially that late. Like, I just don't understand why. Like, so all these guys that don't have USFL or XFL uniforms, our letter of intent guys or collegiate draft rights guys. So guys that have never played in these leagues. Mm-hmm. But DC was able to get any guy they wanted back. And I don't understand because they were nine and one. So they obviously, I, I know they lost the championship, but obviously they knew something. They were talented evaluators. And now you're going to, 
a guy that they want was Tobias Taylor. Like he signed the letter of intent. How come you're not looking at that list and saying, you know what? That's who I'm going to go after or a Yeti or a Johnson or anything like that. They left them unprotected knowing that guess what? No one's going to pick them up because they don't know football. Like we know football. That's just my yeah. shot. So yeah, absolutely. Can't agree with you more. And then the free agent sign of the week, uh, Robert income DJ, Ole Miss, second team All American, first round draft pick, had a solid season in 2018 for the the Cardinals. Some injuries, another DT man. I know he's with the Michigan Panthers in the off season. I mean, in the uh, preseason last year for the USFL, and I know he played for the Jacksonville Sharks in the Arena League or Indoor League um, this past year. But all I can think is, man, this is a former first round draft pick. You know, you know, he made some money from that that deal, and he's still kicking around. So that means he's hungry, man. Yeah. Like he's hungry. Yeah. Your thoughts? Just that it really stood out. Like you sent me that you sent me the text, and it's like the a former first round draft pick that we just signed and picked up. And you know, again, we talked about it. T.J. Barnes, they picked up Donovan Jeter, um, Boogie. They've got Joe Wallace coming back. They've got some talent up front. And, um, you know, like you said, hungry, you know, the talent is there, the right situation, who knows, but former first round pick is like, say that and then drop the mic. Um, (laughs) hard to argue with that. That's definitely an attention getter. So I'm going to really be anxious to see how he pans out when he hits camp. Yeah, uh, 2017. So that was seven years ago. This guy's still kicking the tires on his career. So obviously, mm-hmm. he uh, like. There's a lot of things out there. I don't know if you read some of the like. I, I'm going to call them gossip magazines about his motivation and all the, all this kind of stuff. Man, the man made a ton of money off of his draft pick. You want to talk about motivation? He's been knocked down all the way to the arena league, and he's still yeah. fighting for a job. So don't tell me that this man doesn't have ro- a motivation. Or this, uh, like a lot of, he took a lot of slack last year for being that la- final day cut for the Michigan Panthers mm-hmm. about that he's out of shape. And I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, then why do, why do they keep giving him opportunities? Like he's got to have something, right? Yeah. And then you say that he made millions of dollars. And now, seven years later, he's still fighting for this job to get back to the NFL. Like mm-hmm. I can't knock this guy. And I, I I'm super excited because. He's a former first round pick, second team All American, all SEC, played in the SEC West. Like, what else do you want from a like that? Is the if you're designing right. in a defensive lineman, that's what he does. He goes to he goes to an SEC West school. He takes on Alabama offensive line. He takes on an LSU offensive line. Right, Georgia. Right. He get he succeeds. He becomes second team All American at Ole Miss, which mm-hmm. is solid in itself. Oh yeah, and then gets drafted first round. And he had a decent start, a little injuries, kind of like it got out of hand, I guess. It, like the falling got out of hand, him falling down that well, but he's still fighting, man. And I can't knock this guy. Mm-mm, not at all. Not at all. So the question of the week, um, we, we had some really good uh, reaction last week about defense coordinator, a lot of support for Jaron Horton, which we kind of knew it's spring football community. Um so this week we're going where? Where do we go from here? I know you got a depth chart, uh, Christian Palantonio from PFN. Yep. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna give you the GM hat. And typically, I'm the GM guy out of the two. You're the coach guy. Yeah. Where do we go from here on that depth chart? Quarterback, we have two. I'd like to pick up one more if Tiamu doesn't sign. Got to get that yep. done. Running back room, I feel pretty good about where they are. Smith, Cameron Harris, Puka, Tobias Taylor. I think we're going to be okay there. I think that if you look at last year and you think about Ryquell, Armstead, between Cameron and Tobias and Puka, I think we can get us a, a, a Ryquell, Armstead there. Up front, I have no issues at all with the offensive line. Um, we're deep. We return a lot of starts. I feel much better about the receiving core now than I did going into the dispersal draft and the super draft. Um, offensively, I think we're pretty good. Defensive backfield, defensive secondary, completely stacked. Like I said, all four starters are back. Um, we've added with the pick with Sparks and Anderson. Put Anderson in free safety, Sparks at corner, 
from from Las Vegas. We picked those guys up. Um, we are very, very deep uh, in the defensive backfield. Linebacker, I feel good. You know, they filled a lot of holes in the dispersal draft, and they filled a lot of holes um, uh, in the super draft. So I think now it's a free agent game. Like, who are you talking to? Who are you out there recruiting? Um, you know, certainly it's it's one of those things, get talent on the bus. But they're beyond picking up another quarterback, there are no real glaring holes, I think, mm-hmm. on the roster right now. They did a wonderful job of sort of purpose, you know, w- with intent, filling where there were gaps and where there were weaknesses. So what are your thoughts? Um, I, I, I agree. Quarterback is top priority uh, because you have to have the third one, first of all. Um, the tight ends, they caught a lot of touchdowns and big plays. I have no problems with them, but if you go get a tight end, it, it, I just got done. I was I caught a glimpse of the Bills and Chiefs, right? They're playing right now. Yeah. Three of the best tight ends in the world are on that, on that field, and it changes your offense a little bit, right? It does. Do we have that guy? I don't know. I know it's I know it's spring football. Alex, uh, go ahead. I I can see it on the tip of your tongue. Yeah, I'm sorry. It just you know I didn't mean to cut you off because I mean you know. Um, but Matt Sabert. I, I mean I think go back and think yeah. about him from the Maulers. I'm surprised nobody's picked him up. And I look at like you know Brawley Moore is a guy uh, you know um, who played last year. I think Al- Alex Ellis is a Tennessee guy, I believe. Um, you know, so they're both returning. But you know. I'm surprised somebody's ne- not given uh, Matt somebody. You know, he'd be one that, like, yeah. if I'm if I am pulling the GM string, because when you mentioned tight end, I'm like, yeah, we potentially could be like there. I'd like to see. I'd like to see them bring him into camp. Yeah, I I just think um, the the tight ends that we have didn't have a lot of catches, but they had touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe uh, one of them had seven catches and four touchdowns. So it's obviously, a big play. Matt Sabert's been that his entire career. Go look at his collegiate stats. He'd fit perfectly in there. Mm-hmm. Maybe not a ton of targets, but when he does get a chance, he's going to have 15, 20 yards or a touchdown in a red zone. Um, mm-hmm. To continue with the roster building, I think maybe a coverage linebacker. Um, I know they got the edge linebackers, but we're, we're, we're splitting hairs here. Um, oh, yeah. if, if, the ro- if the roster's got to be at 42, right? I'm okay with... The, the 42 that they have, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so you're bringing in someone, the only way I'm bringing in someone. And I made a joke about this on X, Twitter, whatever that, you know, Reggie and Vaughn are just like sitting back, relaxing while <laughs> you've got like the, the Brahmas making 90, they have 96 guys or the stallions seemingly being desperate to sign, uh, Alabama players and Nebraska players. Mm-hmm. Like, th- there's a lot of teams out there that are just like signing guys and okay. Reggie and Vaughn are just like, Hey, we- we've got this under control. We're all right. I'm surprised if Brahms didn't try to sign you web. No, no, I didn't come from Houston. I'm surprised <laughs> I didn't get ace. Right. <laughs> I love it. So to go back before we go to uh schedule. Um, so leave your, leave a comment here of where you think the DC defenders should go. And we'll talk about it. Uh, like I said last week, we got some good reaction out of the Horton uh, to be a defense coordinator. And Greg Williams talking on actually talking, not a report about he's talking to NFL teams now. So maybe uh, Vaughn and Barlow are watching our show and they're big fans and they're like, oh, the fans really want Jaron Horton. Maybe we'll yeah. grab Jaron Horton. So, yeah. Hey, and, and on that note, um, <laughs> Davin Bellamy gave me a gave me a follow back. So uh, you know, I'm hitting the big time. So Coach Barlow and, and Vaughn, if you guys, uh, you know, I, I appreciate the follow back here, guys. Man, you got Bellamy. I didn't get Bellamy. I got Barlow yeah. though. You got Bellamy. You got Barlow. I'm the I'm in with the players. <laughs> yeah, I'm the GM front office guy. Um, so schedule. So it's, a rumor is that the schedule's coming out. Uh, it could be out by the time the show comes out. Uh, we're filming this on Sunday night, so don't hate us if you catch it after that. Monday. We're hearing rumors that it's supposed to come out Monday. Ooh. I don't know how great the rumor is that it's supposed to come out. I don't know if you drop the news on a Monday morning. You might wait until Tuesday. I don't know. So we decided to look at this. On the left-hand side, this is D.C. United schedule. On the left-hand side, if D.C. United's on the left-hand side, that means they are home. This is European soccer, so they write everything backwards. Um, I, I We always write, like, Washington at 
Dallas. They write the host and then the visitor on the right. I don't know why. It's like their dates. And they got to put the date before the month and all that. I don't know. It's European. So DC United is actually home on the 30th. So I'm expecting a road game um, mm -hmm. week one. I, I just feel like it. it's a big event. And I don't think it's, and we'll talk about it in a second, but I don't think it's one of those weekends that you can pull off the soccer and a big event like the home opener on the same weekend. There will be there will be one weekend that they do have to overlap because it did not break five and five for the DC United. Just so you know, and then it would be it looks like away and then home and then away and then home. So it looks out of, like a lot of alternating until the middle of the season. Then it, I know it looks like there's two DC. It's alternating, but there's a Wednesday game in there, so that didn't count. I couldn't get out of the graphic. I apologize. It looks like it's going to be a lot of balance scheduled for the DC United. I mean, DC defenders based off the DC United. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw this out to you. If there's one team that we play on week one, and it looks like it's going to be USFL versus XFL side, so you can't count the Stallions. Who do you want to see on week one? Hmm. Well, if EJ Kelly doesn't come back, give me the Panthers. Because uh, he, uh, he just signed. That's breaking. I'm not joking. Like the last like ten minutes before the show, EJ Perry. Kidding me? I'm like no. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, <laughs> ten minutes before the show. Larson a Larson bomb came out, and EJ Perry is signing with the Michigan Panthers. All right, give me uh, give me Memphis then. How about yeah? That? Give me Memphis, man. I I want the chef cookies. That's what oh, I yeah. want. I want cookies. Yeah. I want chef. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, give me um, Memphis. Yeah, I, well, I think it would be the perfect time to go catch Memphis. Right, he's learning the system still. Yeah, absolutely. No, um, I, I think EJ Kelly. That's that's a great pickup for the Panthers because he he made they're a totally different team with him at quarterback. We saw that firsthand. Um, so yeah, good good for them. Yeah, I just think it was beginner's luck. I think if the second if, if if they played a defense the second time, yeah, they they would have figured him out. They I had mean, no we tape still on him. Home. Yeah, I know they didn't have any tape on him, and he had a really good half. Whatever. I, anyways, <laughs> we could get into tangents. We're we're grumpy old men when it comes to the Maulers. Um, but so the the schedule is going to be balanced. I want the Showboats too. Week one, um, I think it's perfect time to catch Coach Flip. I think um, getting Chef Cookus, um, that team is the most transition team, I think, mm -hmm. like where there's a lot of changes going on yeah. in the yeah. USFL side. Birmingham's already taken because I would love to smash Birmingham week one. But Houston is whatever, man. It's Houston. You know, Mark Mark's a great foul, and Ace is cool, but, like, whatever. And they got Ruben and they got Henny, so I can't root against them a lot. I think yeah. Memphis is the only team that I can fit in my – Michigan, it's – Nobody cares about Michigan. I, hey, <laughs> hey, let, let's let's root about Detroit, right? The Lions. Everyone can root for America's team left in the NFL playoffs. Yeah, the Lions, but true. that's true. Yeah, that's the other thing too about Michigan. They had the uh, the Wolverines won it all, and the Lions yeah. are this deep in the playoffs. And it's like, what's going on up there? Could I bet you yeah. Panther fans are getting excited? Maybe they think they're charmed too. And, and the, yeah, right. Come on. Well, thank you. We made it through another one. Um, next week, we let's see what happens. Um, trying to get a player interview or two coming up. Uh, dive real deep into this team, maybe a coach's interview, whatever. But leave your suggestions on what we should do with the show. Any comments, feedback? We love it. We love feedback. We're trying to make this show the most popular team show in the entire world. Not just for the D.C. Defenders, but everyone. And it's for you, uh, Beer Snakes and Lemonhead. So, um, Alex, you want to say your goodbye? Yeah, I'll say goodbye, but I'll say that, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, we'll see, you know, we're seeing the numbers of viewers go up and appreciate people engaging, uh, watching the show. We want to see you engage with the content. Like, um, mm -hmm. you know, leave us, leave us comments. We comment back. Tell it, you know. Mm -hmm. We can talk about anything. We can trade recipes if you want to, but it's about community, right? And that's what we're looking <laughs> to build through the show. 
And, um, you know, we appreciate the support. We love covering this team. And uh, the fun hadn't even really – well, the offseason, it has been a lot of fun. But the real fun is going to happen here in, what, about another 10 weeks? We're getting closer. It's 10, it's 10 weeks, yeah. 10 weeks from today. Wow. That's incredible. It would be the Sunday of the home opener or the week, the opener. But That's – be here before you know it. Yeah, you're telling me, man. You're telling me. Like, camp, camp is legitimately like five weeks away. Wow. Give us something yeah. to talk about. They'll be in Arlington. So, hey, I, I, I want to know who they're pairing up with. I don't know if you've read some of the rumors or the story out there. Okay. Is that Michigan and San Antonio have been paired up with sharing a facility in Arlington? So, I want to know who we're going to pair up with. Probably I, I think the Stallion, it, since you and Zach are so close, they probably want to keep keep that going. Hey, I, I I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't know. Here Maybe it's because I'm not a USFL side anymore, but like Zach Potter doesn't bother me. I got the coolest GM in the league, Von Hutchins. Yeah, you got, so. you got Von Hutchins. We're, we're, yeah, we, we got the coolest staff. Like, I love the Mauler staff. Don't get me wrong, but like, this is as cool. Like, they're, they're, they're just, they got a vibe to them, like yeah. different than everyone else. And that's what I really appreciate. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is good. We got three in the can. This is, yeah. 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 You going to, you going to do your sign off? I think I will do my sign off. I, I had a lot of fun tonight. It's great. Appreciate to going back and recovering the, the super draft. I'm loving this roster. We're getting close to kickoff. But until next time, so long, everybody. <laughs> this has been the DC Defender Show. I'm Webb. He's Alex. Webb and Alex out. Shields up. Thank <laughs> you.